Hey, this is Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials, and welcome back to uh, Beginning Unity. So, uh, today we're going to go over a couple additional things, and uh, we'll try to get as much done as we can in the 30-minute uh, vi video time, 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, so, we're probably going to add some stationary enemies as well as animation. So, first what we're going to do is we're going to animate. We're going to give our character the animation walk the uh, right direction walk. Um, so for that reason, uh, since we're going to animate and we want to go over that so you could learn that, um, hopefully you found a uh, sprite atlas um, with the 2D sprites that you could use, so, uh, just like I have down here uh, pulled up here in the assets window. Hopefully you found one with frames such as this and you could do um, what we're trying to do right now. So uh, let's go ahead and um, tr and uh, do that. And it's probably not going to look too crazy because we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time on it. Like I said, you know, this game isn't necessarily for a finished product. It's for you to understand. So um, you're probably going to need to put, if you're going to release the, vi uh, the game or if you want to be proud of it and show it to your friends or your parents or, you know, school activities or whatever, uh, you probably want to clean up all of the, um, you know, like you saw, if I hit play, um, I have this, like, uh, this clipping here on the sprite, so you're going to want to clean all that stuff up, and also your walking animation, and obviously that is completely true, because you're not copying, oh, obviously you're not copying exactly what I'm doing, because you're going to have different sprites, so uh, this is all is, uh, has to be manipulated um, for you to get correct. So uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit window and you're going to go animation and it's going to come up like this. Let me go ahead. I have it open right now. Let's go ahead and do uh, window animation and then we're going to drop that in there, lock it in. So now it's right up, right there after the game and you notice it says no, anim no animatable objects selected. We're going to select the main character. We're going to create an animation clip and then right here it's going to pop up and you're going to point to your assets folder. And what I'm going to call it is um, main character walk. Because we could have enemies that have sort of um, walking uh, animations as well. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a property. So basically what, uh, w what we're going to do here in animation, and if animation you're not completely familiar with or not familiar with at all, Animations where you set keyframes, and basically what it does is it just changes an image between one point and another. Uh, this being 2D um, and not 3D like uh, like Maya, um, it doesn't it doesn't you know create a smooth motion because it doesn't have that that data. So what we're going to do is it's just going to cycle through these frames in a fashion to where it's quick enough that you don't notice that it skips over the the intermediate step. But thankfully for us. This was done in Maya, and it is very, um, it is very fluid, 20 frame um, animation. So if we could get it to play slow enough to match our walking speed, we should have, we should be perfectly fine. So you also notice that it added a component in here, the animator, and uh, gives us a clip count. And also we have uh, curves so that we could do, um, you know, more of a parabolic type movement. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do basic basic stuff and then I'll probably touch into it later on because you could also do the animation and then the animator animator is another thing for 3D so you know when you play a first person shooter and you see your character holding his gun out or his weapon kind of sways a little bit so you could do that in their animation engine as well but right now we're only worried about the 2D animation um, engine so what we're going to do is we're going to leave everything how it is we're going to do add property and you see all the different types of properties that we could add a keyframe that changes at a later keyframe time. So what we want to do is we want to mess with the sprite, right? So we're going to go under Sprite Redditor, and we're going to click on Sprite. And you notice here what kind of frustrated me at the beginning. I'm like, how come I can't do anything? Like, I'm double-clicking, and it does nothing. What you need to do is you need to go over the right, and there's a plus sign. And you hit the plus. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to start with Poppy 1. So I'm going to start with Poppy 1, and that is now set to a keyframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you click up here on the timeline, and what you're going to do is you're going to say add keyframe. 
So now I add another keyframe. I'm going to click on them, and I'm going to move to the next keyframe. So now that has changed. So now if you look back, here's one, here's two. And now this is going to look slightly weird because um, the timing might be off because I'm just doing it every five seconds. Um, so it's going to look slightly weird, but uh, that's okay. So here we're going to do poppy three. Let's set, set our keyframe. Make sure you select it. See how this is still selected? So you need to select this one. Poppy four. Add keyframe. Poppy five. Add keyframe. Poppy six. Let me go ahead and uh, leave out of uh, steam there really quick. Five, six. Let's add another one. Seven, eight, oops, nine. So I have twenty frames. So you notice already I'm going to hit the end, or I'm going to have an issue. So um, we are going to move this to the right. I'm going to make sure that we're going the right way. Okay, we're still good. Add keyframe. So luckily I only decided to do um, uh, to do 20 keyframes. So what I just did there, and you could use the, the forward and backward scroll movement to change the different stuff. Okay, so let me just move this guy forward. Check to make sure we're going correctly. Um, add keyframe. This is going to be 12. This one's going to be 13. 12, 13. Also, another issue that we might have is we might have an issue with the collider getting jacked up. So, uh, because he's changing his feet, even though it's locked at a certain point in his stomach, I think we should be okay because his feet are okay. We don't really have to worry too much about that. So, uh, we'll see if we have to animate the collider as well, which would really suck. Okay. So, this is going to be 14. Fifteen, sixteen. Actually, I'm going to be making sure that this is even okay. And then see, this loops back here, so we could basically get rid of. Yeah, let's let's go all the way through and see what happens. Sixteen. So this is going to be seventeen. This is going to be eighteen. This is going to be nineteen. And then this is going to be back to one. Actually, it's okay. Um, this is going to be 19. So let's just delete this. Alrighty. So that is uh, max. So now it's going to, then it's going to loop back. So now what we could do is uh, we're going to check to make sure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19. Okay, so let's go ahead and play our game. And there's our poppy animation. 
uh, our main character animation. So it looks good. I'm going to pause it really quick, go back to the, uh, and take a look at the collider here. It looks to be good, even though it's, it should, this is the original one. So it's fine. The collider, we're not going to have an issue with it, but you might need to add another um, property, uh, adding the box collider 2D, and you're just going to need to reshape the, the box collider 2D to be exactly what you need inside of um, his body structure there. And how you could do that manually is just go here, right? And uh, as you see right here, it's Poppy 15. Just change this to the to the one you want, and just write down. Have a piece of paper, or or just go, just flip from here to here. As you notice, I pause the game. So technically, if I lift the pause, it'll come back. And I see here is now a different frame. So uh, what you could do is just change the sprite from one to another. And then uh, I could actually, one of the things is that if you change the stuff in the right hand side here when the game is active and you let the game and you like stop the game, all your original changes from before you started the game will, will recall. So uh, don't change anything in the animator because it's going to just revert. So um, what you do is you just hit stop, go back to your original guy, and right now I'm at Poppy. Oh, 19, because I guess I changed the change the animator, so it's it's at here at the end, which is fine. They're like almost identical. Um, so let's say I change it to let's say I have a, uh, an issue with Poppy like six. Of course I don't, but let's just say that I do, right? So I would just change the box collider. You see, it's actually it is lifting a little bit. So I would just change that box collider by adding another property, and you do that by hitting add property, and then you hit. Um, the box collider 2D, and you say set size or offset, probably size, and then you just key all those again. And you already have them all set, so um, I would just check that, go through your game, and you'll notice when we, it's also another thing to tweak later on, as you'll see when we go further in, uh, the, actually the next portion, when uh, we put in like a spike or something that, um, that our character is going to hit, right? So we were perfect here. All right, give me a second. I'll be right back. Hey, and we are back. Uh, sorry about that. I apologize. I didn't. I totally forgot to have a spike ready to go um, at for our, for our um, sort of like stationary, just uh, avoid enemy. So I went in Photoshop and I created a um, like a um, a uh, pixel art. Um, version of um, a a, um, a spike, right? So uh, it was a 32 by 32, and I created in Photoshop really quick. So now we have it. So you see, I dragged it into the assets, and it's a PSD. So what? Uh, it's a that's the native Photoshop file, and it has an alpha channel. So the good thing about the alpha channel is that it allows me to automatically cut out my uh, particular um, object just in case I wanted to do you know like an enemy's um, uh, texture atlas right which you can you can have a giant texture atlas but uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it if you're gonna just import one by one so what you're gonna do is you're gonna then go into multiple sprite mode and also I found out that if it's a um, tech if it's like a pixel art you're gonna want to go to point filter because otherwise it's gonna just jack everything all up. So uh, then I'm just going to hit apply. And what you're going to do is you're going to go into the right here and we're, oh sorry, you're actually going to go into the sprite editor. So what we're going to do is we're going to give our um, trimmer another chance. So what we're going to do is we're going to set to automatic and have it slice, boom, automatic, perfect, perfect slice. Now the reason why I like to set it as multiple and then go in and slice it because in my PSD I could have extra here. But of course, if you're um, that that's it. That's when you're just you know getting started with the game. Later on, you're obviously going to want PNGs instead of PSDs. The uh, reason being is that in your game engine is smaller, less compressed, less uh, stuff to compress and push into your final game uh, folder. 
So after we're done with that, we're going to hit apply. We're going to close that, and then we're going to drag that into our scene and take a look. And you can see that it's like absolutely microscopic. But because it is a um, pixel art, you're not going to really lose too much detail, and you'll see here in a second. So as I bring this thing up, you see that it's like almost unchanged. And now you'll notice, which I actually just found out right now, is that if I change it to bilinear, it looks like crap. I try linear, it still looks like crap. Point is clear. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna size this up to uh, poppy, so I, I'm gonna probably just overlap them like this. And I probably wanna be about right about there. Okay, and then we're gonna uh, play our game and you're gonna see straight away an issue. Check it out. You see how the point is in front of our character? So, um, it depends on whether you want to do that, but uh, whether you want to have that or not, but I'm going to just go into it just to introduce you to this concept. So we have this thing called sorting layers, and you'll see it right here, sorting layer. So what you're going to do is we want to create uh, three sorting layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our main character. It doesn't really matter who you start out with. Sorting layer and hit add sorting layer. So what it does is it goes from top from like um, from down here on the on the layers page up. I believe um, I just used this a couple days ago and I forgot. Uh, so we're going to call this foreground. This is usually what we're probably not going to use the middle ground but I'll uh, just have it there and then background now that this is saved it automatically saves so let's go to main character and let's put this guy into the foreground platform one let's just call this middle ground but this is a cube so you can't do the 2d sorting layer and spike Let's just move this to the uh, middle ground. So now, um, if I remember correctly, yes. So now our character walks in front of the spike. Another thing that you could do is you could move the spike backwards into the scene, but we don't want to do that. Reason being, wait one second. Spike one, why is it all? Oh, that's the scale. Okay, so that's fine. So zero, zero, main character's at zero. So we are fine. So uh, we want them to be zero, 0, in order for the collision to be correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, the general. Um, I think for this case, we only need a, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do polygon collider. And I'm going to modify the polygon a little bit so we get a little bit better collision. my mouse is I think I got I got a nice gaming laser mouse so I'm wondering if it's like screwing up uh, I think there was a piece of hair or something on the bottom okay uh, it's really acting weird okay so now we have a pretty nice collider of course you could obviously mess with this uh, with with what whatever you have I might even you know um, now that I'm using a lot of my own stuff now I might just have to uh, post a lot of this stuff but in any case we have this here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say it's trigger um, actually let's just do not trigger okay so let's uh, let's make sure we have collision and we have collision and it, it looks like a really really nice collision uh, because we have these uh, polygon colliders, so we have a really, really nice collision. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, go back into our script and we're going to edit it so that when we hit that spike, kills our character. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back into that script and I actually have it open already here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to on collision enter 2D. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, let's just actually, a lot of code reuse here, so 
Let me just copy that, paste it back. What we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, a tag of spike. And then what I'm going to say is if it's spike, I'm going to say character, I think it was uh, destroy. Ah. Um, it's a character. We already have it set to game object. Dot set active to false. Basically, what this does is it kills our character. It doesn't destroy. It doesn't destroy the um, reference to the character. It just sets it inactive. So meaning that your character disappears, right? And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check this out. And I hit it, and I didn't have a collision. Oh, I didn't. Uh, of course, I didn't set the. Um, I I still I still forget a lot of things. I I need to set the tag. So what I'm gonna do tag, and I'm gonna call it spike. Oh, what happened? Ah. Um, I'm not sure if I need it. Uppercase. Oh. I think I went back too far. Okay, so we're good here. Okay, so we have floor. This is going to be spike. Oh. This capitalized spike. Spike. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's capitalized. It's not capitalized. I'll just capitalize it. Build that. I'm going to go back. Add that tag. The spike. Oop. Now I should die. Boop. I died. Okay. And it's way too close that I can't even get the uh, the uh, jump off in time, so that's not good. So let's go ahead and move this. And now this gets into the portion of level design, obviously. So I see it coming. I don't even know if I have enough jump. Oh, almost cleared it. I don't have enough jump. So what you do now is you see, I don't really like, well, I mean, he is a heavy looking character, but his jump is pretty weak. Let's just, let's just scale with that. And as you see, since I'm scaling everything, it also scales the collider. So now we have like a really, really small spike. It should be easily able to clear that. Yep. And it's also floating a little bit. So uh, we are good on that. And I'm going to add one more thing in this particular tutorial, and that is um, like overall death death. So that is when you um, fall off of this particular like um, this platform, right? So it's a platformer. If you fall off, you're supposed to die. So what we're going to do is we're going to go game object, 3D object, cube. So we're going to create another cube. What we're going to do is we're just going to make it about this size. And we're going to make this particular cube follow our character forever under a certain point, right? So the issue with that is that when you fall off the map, you shouldn't be able to see it. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to delete the cube mesh so it's actually invisible. So we're going to go from cube to none. Now when you're in game, it's actually invisible. So like if I even... Um, so I'm going to call this uh, Death Collider. I'm just going to call this Death Trigger. Okay. 
So you're not actually going to be able to see this. So in this case, let me just drag this up and underneath here. So whenever I'm going to I'm going to add a box collider to that, which is already there, I'm going to change to trigger. So whenever I go through that, or whenever I hit it, I guess you could technically uh, use that as um, when you hit it, you die. But I'm just going to go over this if you're going to use triggers. So I'm going to have a separate section for that. And it's very similar to collisions. So when I collide with that, I'm also going to set my game object from active to not being active. So uh, also, I need it to match my X movement, so it's going to follow my X. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and do that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, var. Actually, let's do this at top here. Say var uh, death trigger. Or let's just call this like... Um, fall trigger, because everything is technically a death trigger. I'm just going to call this a transform, because that's all we need to use is transform. What we're going to do is we're also going to set um, death as uh, fall trigger dot local position dot x is equal to character dot transform dot local position Dot x. So now uh, that will follow us. So now all we need to do is we need to have a on trigger enter 2D. So very, very similar. Um, so now uh, we can have stuff as triggers rather than just colliders. It's, uh, it's a little bit better to um, sort of uh, separate them. Um, because it does give you, it, it gives you a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to worry about, um, um, you know, super crazy amount of tags sitting in here and kind of, I don't know. It, you could use either or, it doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you this so you could get the idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two different um, pieces here. And what we're going to, well, I just copied and pasted it. So we're going to have here, we're going to have um, like a death trigger. So um, I'm just going to call this fall. So let's just go ahead and call this fall. Oops. Sorry about that. So fall. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go from this to this. All right, so that should be fine. And we need to create another tag, and we need to associate that to that variable. So let's go ahead and go back. And I'm going to look at my main character. And I'm going to drag the death trigger in to um, Some, it, it auto entered that uh, other thing in there. So um, let's go ahead and go back. It's so fall trigger set. And then I need to set one other thing. What was it? Ah, the, um, the uh, fall tag. Add tag. Fall. Okay, so let me add that to here. Fall. So now, when I make it to the end of the map, which I actually probably should just uh, shorten the map so I don't have to worry about uh, having to walk all the way. Let's actually do this temporarily. Just make this really small to where I don't even make it to the spike. Oh, the pivot's over there. Okay. Actually, I might hit the spike 
as I go off. That should be fine. Should be able to fall before I hit the spike. I don't know if I hit the spike or not. Where is the... Ah, see, um, I forgot I needed to change it from a... It should be just, um, this is just a standard on trigger. Um, that's going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to, um, Totally forgot about this here, this being an issue. So let me go back to death trigger, let me delete that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate the spike. And I'm actually gonna use a spike as the death trigger. Reason being is because I need something 2D rather than 3D because it's on collision enter 2D. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete the sprite, just make it none. No sprite. And just leave it pointed like that, it's not a big deal. And it's going to do this is trigger. So now when it falls through, so now I'm going to call this death trigger. When he falls through, he's going to die. And I can just change this from spike to fall. And of course, you can obviously keep this as spike and it kills him, but uh, we have... Ooh, did he go through again? Oh, I forgot to um, associate. So let me go ahead and pull this here. Let's go ahead and start. There you go. So he dies. All right. So obviously, uh, you're going to want to have this down further so that he dies down further. Right? And he's gone. Okay. So uh, that is some uh, basics there. So now we have a basic enemy, and we have a um, death trigger that if you fall, you die. Um, what we're also going to uh, look at is... Um, oh, also another uh, thing to explain why I have why can't you she's like hey Steven why don't you just have spike for both you know you're falling and whatnot the reason being is that we're going to create a particle emitter at those points so like when you die blood blows out certain things right so in the case of the the um, this fall trigger we might have a different type of death particle compared to if you fall on a spike. So that is the reason why there are two different tags, because we would need to do that later anyways. All right, so um, yeah, and we're gonna also create a more intelligent enemy that sort of like uh, walks back and forth, and um, we're gonna have to uh, kill that, well, uh, we, we're gonna create power-ups so that we could, uh, one of our power-ups is gonna be that we, um, when we hit an obstacle that would otherwise kill us rather than falling, this is also another reason why we have two separate tags. When we hit something, when we collide with something like an enemy or a spike, it will destroy the spike and take away our power up. So it's basically like a one hit invulnerability power up. And also we're gonna have a double jump power up to where we can jump twice. So if we need to, you know, if we misclick and we wanna save ourselves but we don't have a standard power up, we could use that power up. Alrighty, so uh, that will be it for this tutorial. Um, this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials. I like, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like it in this series and other series as well. I'll see you guys in the next Unity tutorial series. And uh, I will catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.